Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to summarize the rules of determinants. And then in the next videos, we're going to show you each one of those rules and an example of them so that it makes sense to us. But here, let's summarize them. There's 13 of them. The first rule is that if there's a constant C and A is an n by n matrix, then the determinant of the product of the constant and the matrix is equal to the constant raised to the nth power. Now, n is what we call the order of the matrix. If it's a 2 by 2 matrix, n is 2. If it's a 3 by 3 matrix, n is 3. So we take the constant raised to the nth power times the determinant of the matrix A. The second rule is that for an n by n matrix, or the corresponding n by n determinant, the negative of the matrix, if we then take the determinant of that, it is equal to negative 1 to the n power times the determinant of the matrix, which is really the same thing as there where we replace the constant by the number negative 1. So just see that how the sign changes as the order of the matrix changes. The third rule is that determinants have what we call the distributive property. If we have the product of two matrices, and then we take the determinant of the product of the two matrices, that is the same as taking the determinant of the first matrix and the determinant of the second matrix, and then multiplying those two results together, you get the same results. The fourth rule is what we call the identity matrix rule. Here we have the identity matrix, which of course is Oh, that's not the identity matrix if you take, of course, that away. Here's the identity matrix where you have ones along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. If we then take the determinant of that, we get one. And then we realize that that is the same as taking a matrix of the same order, A, and multiplying that times the inverse of the matrix and then taking the determinant of that product, which, of course, by the previous rule can be written as the determinant of A times the determinant of the inverse of A, when you multiply that together, you get 1, which means that's the same as getting the determinant of the identity matrix. Conversely, because of that, we can then write that the determinant of matrix A is equal to 1 divided by the determinant of the inverse of matrix A, and we'll call that rule 5. Rule 6 here, notice that if we have a matrix B, if we multiply that times matrix A, and then we multiply that times the inverse of matrix B, again, by the same rule, the distributive property, we can write it as the product of the determinants of each of those three matrices. And then we realize by this rule that this can be written as 1 over the determinant of B, which can then be written as this. The determinant of B the divided by the determinant of B is simply equal to 1, so we simply get the determinant of matrix A. Rule number seven says that the determinant of matrix A is equal to the determinant of the transpose of matrix A. And rule eight, the determinant of the complex conjugate of matrix A is equal to the determinant of matrix A. And from that, then you take the complex conjugate of it. And those two should be equal to one another. The ninth rule says that if two rows of matrix A are identical, then the determinant of that matrix will be equal to zero. Rule 10 says that if the matrix A has a row of nothing but zeros, then also the determinant of that matrix will equal zero. Rule 11, if the rows of matrix A are dependent, and you may not realize what that means, but we'll show you the example and the definition of that. But just realize that if they are dependent, then the determinant of that matrix will also be equal to zero. Rule number 12, if matrix A is not invertible, in other words, if it does not have an inverse, then we know that the determinant of that matrix is also equal to zero. And consequently, if a does have an inverse, if it's invertible, we can't find the inverse, then the determinant of the matrix will not be equal to zero. So those are 13 very good rules to know, and we're going to show you examples and definitions of each of those 13, and that's how we'll get a better understanding of what determinants are.